Thanks so much for being here. So people who've been paying attention to, to, uh, to these kinds of things, been paying a lot of attention to uh, this guy, Chris Abbott, for the last four years now. Um, you probably have seen him as uh, Charlie on Girls. Uh, anyone seen that? Um, yeah, OK. A few of you. And, and uh, he's, he, he's been at it for about four years now. We just finished watching his extraordinary work in James White. Um, I'm very pleased to say, after watching that movie, that he has showered. He looks quite clean. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very proud to introduce Chris Abbott. So, man, we just finished watching that movie. It was a really extraordinary piece of work. I can't really think that I've ever seen a movie quite like that. Um, talk about Josh and you sort of first sitting down and conceiving of what this film was going to be and what, what you and, and he wanted to do with it. Um, hi, thanks for coming. Um, well, I'm, I was lucky enough to have been friends with Josh for uh, years before we filmed this. Um, we became friends on Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene, um, but I hadn't even known him about a year prior to that. So, uh, you know, I, in a way, I mean, this, this movie is not completely autobiographical, but the, um, there's a lot of Josh in it. Um, so I guess subconsciously I was able to work on it for you know for just knowing him for a long time before we actually started filming, and then on a more technical level I was able to read um, you know multiple drafts of the script and and I, he he wrote it I would chime in with little things here and there but uh, that's it's mostly him um, yeah and then it was you know he he asked me to do it uh, about a year you know officially like a year and a half before we started filming and. Um, and and that's it. You know, we it's made a movie with a dear friend. Is there a strange kind of responsibility when you're doing a story that means so much to a guy who's right there up in your in your on your in your grill as your director and your and your screenwriter, but also such a close friend of yours? I mean, this is a very very deeply personal story for him. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I I think it's exactly that. I felt a responsibility and less and less of a pressure, just uh -huh. just a responsibility. Um, just to you know, do right by my friend, um, you know, play him in the best light possible, <laughs> you know. But I mean, again, it's not it's not autobiographical in that way. It's uh, it is a it is a character, and you know, um, I, there are some uh, dramatic embellishments, but um, but yeah, just that res responsibility. So, okay, I, I, I what I really want to know, you are. All sorts of messed up in this movie. You you are uh, you're you're drunk. You're you're on acid in some scenes. I mean, there are different stages of screwed upness for James White in this movie. Uh, talk about how like okay, how do you play drunk? I mean, uh, what talk about the process of being a, a screwed up guy on movies and making on a, on a movie and making that play? Um. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, it's. I guess it would help to have been drunk once in a while, and and uh, you know I, I'm I don't black out when I'm drunk, so I'm able to remember what what it feels, you know, what uh -huh. it, what, it, what it feels like. I mean, to some level, um, I mean it's I think it, you know it's it's not it's not so technical um, in terms of just you know I, I feel like playing drunk, you know. I mean I think if you're uh, observant and you see how people are when they're drunk and you you take kind of mental notes you can you know you can kind of put that in your uh bag of tricks for for a later day and you know and i think that's kind of what i did or tried to do well there's the, it I, I imagine you like s hanging out with your friends and studying them where they're all getting totally wasted and that being yeah but you do fun. that for fun anyway yeah, i mean I you say, know like, like that's, that's not a guy that's, i want to invite it's to not my even party. an acting uh you know <laughs> thing you just kind of use it's just fun to watch now um the relationship between you and uh, your mother, played by Cynthia Nixon, who's incredible in the movie, uh, talk about building that relationship and and what sort of what uh, you and Josh kind of wanted to to get across, and how you and Cynthia kind of built up that uh, that relationship. Um, well, we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, first of all, I mean, we so we kind of had to play the get to know you game pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we'd only hung out uh, a few times, me, her, and Josh, a couple times before we started filming. I mean, you know, Cynthia's, uh, Cynthia's a very generous act actor, so 
um, there's kind of immediately a trust there. And, um, it, you know, sh she had kind of done her work and done her homework and so did I. So we didn't really, I mean, we, and we would rehearse a few times before uh, filming the scene. So, uh, you know, I think from once we filmed our first scene, it was kind of established, uh, I don't know, the kind of give and take that, that, that we, right. we would have. Right. Now, uh, when, when did you become an actor? When, when, when was it something that you realized was going to matter to you and that you were going to, you know, make sacrifices and do all the things you have to do to um, do this line of work? I mean, I, st I, I, I guess I started, I mean, maybe comparatively fairly late. Um, I took my first class um, in a community college that I was going to, um, which by no means was a great class. It was, it was pretty uninspiring, but... Um, that that's just kind of where I. What were you studying at the time? Oh, uh, I, I I don't even, I don't even remember. We I mean the, the I remember the teacher would kind of write scenes himself and just <laughs> it was it was re it was really bad, it was really really terrible. But I mean I there at least I kind of I I realized there that oh I I kind of know how to do this and uh, it made sense to me. And then shortly thereafter I went to um, HB Studio and. Um, uh, just studied there. I, I saw uh, in, in a backstage a uh, ad for a free audit week at HB, so I decided to take the train out and and go uh, audit some classes. And I slowly started taking classes there and commuting, and then moved to New York and started going to school there. So it's the theater-based training. So um, take us back to that time in your life, first moving to New York. Uh, was it was it an acting or bust kind of thing, or did you? Did you have a Did you have a plan B, or, or um, were you? What were you sort of planning out for yourself at that at that time? I mean, I guess being twenty, I wasn't thinking too far ahead, you know. <laughs> um, so I mean, I was able to say, like, I, I had worked a bunch of jobs, so I saved money, uh, you know, in preparation to move to New York, so I didn't necessarily have to get a job right away, and I just went to school, so I just took classes, and I didn't really worry about anything else. What did uh, your Did you have like uh, loved ones, parents that were that were concerned about your life choices, or did were you 100% supported in this decision you were making? I mean, I, I was supported, but my I guess my parents were are somewhat unknowing of of the whole, uh, you know. Uh, business anyway, so they were just like they. I could just tell them whatever. I can tell my mom that I'm fine, and you know, and she would just believe me. Um, I was like, yeah, I have a job. Don't worry. Uh, uh, yeah, but no, I mean, and so in that in that way, they were very very supportive. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean, I just I I just went to school. I mean, I just, just went to school and then started going to um, uh, equity principal auditions, where ba which are basically cattle calls. Um, and then kind of got my way th in, into theater through that. But if we could step back for a moment, like that when you're at that sort of uh, uh, crappy dra drama class and you sort of figure out, hey, like that switch goes off that says, I can actually do this. I know what I'm doing up here. Uh, like wh how do are you able to realize that or figure that out and sort of trust it when you, when, when you hear that voice telling yourself, you know, I actually know what I'm doing here? Because that seems like that's hard. I mean, I th yeah, and I, I mean, I think it is hard. I mean, I, I guess it's a very subtle feeling that you feel like you right. have a knack for it, but then, I, I mean, I feel like you, um, for your own ego, you need encouragement from other people, and you need, uh, I, you know, uh, I, it helped me when people would just say, hey, that was a really great scene that, that you just did, or, or, you know, if they were moved by something. I mean, I, you need, it's such a, um, it's such a vague uh thing to do anyway and there's no right or wrong answer there's no really right right way to do it so um i think yeah just kind of encouragement uh from others kind of helped it along were you were you uh, as confident that you were going to be up for like all, all of the emotional stuff that you've got to do in a movie like this because there's some there's some tough emotional moments that would be challenging to to any actor, uh, I mean, uh, were you confident that you were going to be able to pull it off? And talk about those those days. I mean, those big days when you had to do like uh, the farewell scene, or, or you know, you, 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 you in, talking yeah, about this movie this now, movie, not yeah. back then. Not back then. Oh, okay. I'm talking about this movie now. Just you know, jumping on the confidence uh, you know train there. Yeah. And how, how did you know uh, that you would be able to pull this off? And and talk about those days when you had to do the the really tough emotional sledding. Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I mean, I guess there's, I mean, there's different ways of working uh, for everybody. I mean, I, 
I try to not think about it until I, you know, especially because uh, you. But you have to be able to get there. I mean, you got to know that you can get there. You got to know. I mean, get there. But then I, th I mean, I, I, I rely so much on other actors. You know, I'm not. I, f I feel I, I don't. I. I I don't like think of some sad memory or or like trying to con or conjure up some kind of, you know, emotion because then I f then I feel like that kind of holds you back because then you stop listening to the other person and I just I I feel like I just try to do my best to just believe in the reality of the actual scene and you know whether I find whether it angers me or whether I find it sad I just try to I try my hardest to believe in it. And and it's not you know and and it's not I'm not saying it's method in that way where where oh I you know I thought I was in the in the hotel room and the, like it's not it wasn't that at all I mean you're completely aware of uh, right. the, the other people around you but then in a way at, and at the same time it's it, it almost becomes a them a performance for them and uh, you know a performance for your acting partner and um, yeah I mean it's it's a, it's an odd odd thing so. Uh, Talk about uh, girls and uh, getting that that role uh, and uh, and the significance of that and also the sort of early work doing working on that show. I mean, it's been now four or five years since I've actually worked on it, so mm -hmm. it's, it's been a long. I mean, I haven't I haven't worked on the show for a while. Um, that was just an, a regular audition um, where uh, you know I would go in and I improvised uh, with Lena. On, uh, you know, the I, I at the time I only read the pilot, and and the part wasn't um, that big in the pilot, so there wasn't actually much to go on. So I think a lot of it just came from uh, Lena and and the the improvs that we were doing. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's it. That that's how good creating old good that, old regular audition. Creating that guy, uh, Charlie. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, Talk about the process of sort of filling him out and kind of realizing uh, who he was. Yeah, well, I mean, it was in the stage directions a little bit, <laughs> you know. So you kind of you, you can kind of go off that. Well, that helps. Pretty, you know. Yeah. I mean, Lena wrote it, you know. Yeah. So, um, and she, I mean, especially in the beginning, because I didn't even know what I. It was hard to even tell what the part was at first. So she kind of uh, she coaxed it along mm -hmm. for sure, and and. And you know, just would tell me examples of like like stuff that guy would do and and how he would act. And I felt like, oh, I met that person before. I know, I kind of know what that's like. And uh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I, well, as I was watching James White uh, today, I was thinking about this guy, and I was thinking, like, what is your relationship to this guy? Uh, do, is he a guy you know? Is he a guy that's inside of you? Is he the guy that directed you in this movie? I mean, uh, uh, who who is this guy, and how do you know him? I mean, it, it's. I, I feel like it's an amalgamation of of a lot of different things. It's. It's. Uh, you know, you, you, I feel like you always bring a, a part of yourself to something. You know, whether whether it's your own um, insecurities or anxieties or fears. You know, and and uh, uh, you know, it's. I, I feel like when that way, you just kind of play with the levels. You know, uh -huh. if 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 in my life I'm a, you know, my anxiety is a, a twenty. And his is a sixty. You know, you just kind of you, you kind of magnify those. I think maybe some of those things in you, and then um, and then you know, I th I think I mean, and you guys could say too. I think most actors are are, are observers, and and you watch people, and then you you find yourself constantly watching people, and and um, you know, just being very aware and of uh, social dynamics, and you know, like when when you're in a group, when you're in a group, and there's people talking, and that girl is looking at that guy weird and I know why but I can kind of tell you know it's like it's 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 all there's always homework you know so That's you right. kind of it kind of flutters around I feel like it kind of flutters around in your head and then you can kind of pull it up whenever you need it well for me I think and I, I don't know if you guys felt the same way but the most moving scenes for me were the caretaking scenes and seeing a guy who clearly cannot take care of himself being able to take care of someone else. I feel like we've all met people like that in our lives. Uh, I talk about sort of understanding a character like that and specifically about the caretaking scenes and like what, um, what it was like to, to do that and, and have that weight of someone else uh, on you the way it was on, on him in there. And because uh, I'm sure that caretakers have come up to you and talked to you about mm -hmm. uh, how moving it was to see some of that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what me and Josh tried to work on with, with that stuff was uh, to 
to let it be extremely uh, technical in that way. Uh, don't, don't, to not let it, you know, to not get caught up in your own emotions because you, in, I feel like in real life when, when, when you're doing that stuff, that all you're worried about is just get the towel, just get the Tylenol. There, like there's no time, there's no time to be, to have the woe is me feeling. Right. You know what I mean? So it's really, it's, I mean, I, I, I felt it, it was really just focusing on the objectives at hand and, and, and to not think about yourself and only care about the other person. It's funny though, I felt that you, both the mother and, and your character were kind of, they were, you were both similar. I felt like you both had that problem. Like you both could love each other, but you couldn't quite take care of. Yeah, they're both kind of scrappy uh, uh, hippies. <laughs> right, right. Uh, again, uh, is, uh, did you know uh, kids like that? Uh, did you, uh, were you a kid like that? Uh, I mean, um, uh, did you know scrappy hippies when you were growing up? Hmm. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, in a way, this this movie is really specifically New York, you yeah, know, in right. that way. And I think, I think if you're that neighborhood if you're, too, in if some you're born and bred in New York, then it's there's, a, you know, I think you're born with a certain level of anxiety, you know. So, <laughs> so I I didn't I didn't have that, you know. I I mean, I've lived in New York now for almost ten years, but um, so no, I mean, and like and and James White is, I think, you know, a big character trait. He's he's a New York kid, you know what I mean. And that's a that's a specific kind of kind of person, you know this this extreme pride for no reason sometimes, you know of of like you know, but there and it's and there's it's kind of in that scene in the in the when they're uh, they're in Mexico and he's talking to the girl and as soon as the girl says like oh I live in New York and he just kind of that's like a thing and and people from people that I know that are born and bred they they do that like if if you say oh you're from New York and then they go they test you first because they don't believe it because because I, I say I'm from New York just because it's easier sometimes but um, they're like well where'd you go to school you know it's like that's a that's a very common uh, follow up question so. <laughs> Are you saying you Connecticut kids don't have that same sense of pride and, uh, you know? No. <laughs> nope. Uh, so uh, you've been there for about a decade now. You don't get your genuine uh, New York stripes, your genuine New York neuroses. You're I not think, giving it? I think seven years is the, I've been told, is the... Uh, when when you you can say you have officially become a New Yorker, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, you're there now, aren't you? I'm past it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm so a veteran. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I guess you're rooting for the Mets then when they. Yes, uh, I am. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, don't laugh at that. Uh, um, uh, Jack Scollard here uh, wanted to ask you uh, about working with uh, Kid Cudi. And uh, what you knew uh, about his uh, music, if you and and what and what kind of a dude he is. Um, yeah, he's. I mean, he's great. Uh, I think, you know, it's it's it's. I think it's easy to be like, well, he's a musician, really. But then, I mean, the truth is, I mean, I think he, I think he's so genuine in in this movie and really heartfelt and. And he and working with him, he was always so present and there. You know, I never, I never gave him any kind of benefit of the doubt just because he's a musician first. You know, right. he he was he just actually was a a, a great actor in in that way. So that uh, that was extremely refreshing to to be able to you know. And and he was always there to play, and and he would play off me, and and you know we play tennis, and and that's not literally, but you know. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I was uh, like picturing you guys in your tennis whites with the headbands. And yeah, stuff. right. Yeah. <laughs> and jo and Josh, who wrote it, you know, he when he when he was writing the script, he was listening to his music a lot. So I think uh, that mm -hmm. you know that's more for Josh too, where where you know where, where that kind of came from. Now, um, what what kind of plan did you sort of do you have? I mean, do you have an idea of where things want to go uh, now that it's sort of I mean, maybe do you, if you feel still feel like you're scrapping for the next gig, or if you have a big kind of grand plan for things, uh, and do you allow yourself to have that kind of talk and to kind of sort of in terms of figuring out what's next and what kind of projects you want to be working on? I mean, it's, it's not every day that like your best your good friend's going to come with you with like this killer script. Well, that's say, I mean, you know, that's where I've been lucky in, right. in that way. I mean, for, I I don't like to no I don't like to think of anything like a path, you know, right. in terms of that, and I I don't I don't have any plan. In terms of, in terms of like what? Well, what's the next step? You know, I should take it. it kind of, um, I mean, I, I can base things on gut feeling. You know, um, uh, do I want to work with this person or that kind of level? But you know, 
it's um, I, I've been lucky enough to then to kind of get involved in the I mean the theater community in New York first and then the kind of independent film community and it just kind of uh, you know I, I really my, my plan is I really just want to work with my friends and 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 and, all, and also people that I don't know and and people that I would just be excited to work with but uh, well that should cover most people you know friends yeah. and the people you don't know yeah but so. I don't it's 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 a it's a weird question because I don't right I don't know I don't I don't know how to quite you know and there's there's ups and downs, and you know sometimes. You well, I mean, sometimes lightning strikes, right? You know, but sometimes uh, you kind of have to find your. You know, you uh, you have to sort of figure out your way and and make choices that are not going to be necessarily so clear. I mean, it's I'm sure it's pretty clear when your friend comes with this idea that yeah, you, like hell yes, I'm I'm jumping into but, this. You know, and the thing is, we 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 had. We, of course, we had a high expectations for it, but you know, I mean, it's I I, I feel even personally, like, I feel like it's done better than I than maybe I thought it was going. You know, I mean, it's not it's not an easy pill to swallow by any means. So I didn't I didn't I didn't necessarily think you know it was it would be a movie that would kind of grab on and get to go to all these kind all these festivals. You know, we're, I was kind of surprised in in, in that way. So yeah. is, is that what was happening at uh, at Sundance? But, I mean, were you were, were you kind of were you pretty shocked by the response and uh, and Talk about your experience there with this movie. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I mean... What, what surprised you about the way that people were responding to it? It kind of surprised I mean, me how many people laughed during uh, here in the yeah. movie, you know. That, that was sort of interesting. I mean, I was surprised um, just how many people really connected to it on a, on a very personal level. I mean, it is... I mean, it's a... The themes in this movie are not anything new. You know, they're extremely universal, and, and they've been they've been done before. You know, um, but I, you know, I think I, I think it kind of gives people. It's it's a very it's kind of a raw movie in that way, and it kind of leaves you this very uh, visceral feeling. And and not not to say that you know you're someone that needs to have been through that to really understand. I mean, uh, you know, anyone can, but just but just the just that kind of pure connection that I think that people would have, you know, that, that really struck me and kind of, and, and moved me, you know, rather than people just saying, oh, great movie, you know, right. that was a great movie. It's, you know, be, before that, they would just, they would tell their, you know, people would come up and say something that they went through with their story right. and that, and that, that meant a lot. I feel like part of that comes from the fact that you know, caretakers are often shown as the very selfless people, you know, very giving people. And the fact that this guy is not selfless, you know, that he is a, you know, he is a screwed up, self-interested individual was somehow made his giving more touching and more moving to people. You know, I, I guess it was just more human. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, I mean, I, I find it more exciting to play someone with flaws in that way and is, you know, and is kind of an anti-hero in that way. Well, almost and dangerously so in this case, because I, yeah. I, I saw some people say, you know, I really wanted to hate this guy, you know, and uh, and I, I wonder if there were ever moments where you had yourself in, in any kind of struggle like that, like, God, this guy's kind of an asshole. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, that's the kind of, that's the fun part of kind of, dan right. of dancing on that line, you know, right. constantly and, and, and not, you know, to not pull anything back in, in that way. I mean, you know, I, I remember while we were filming it, me and Josh, you know, I would, I would sometimes say to Josh, like, let's make him less likable here, you know, and, and cut, you know. So he was pulling you cut back the sappiness from that. Sometimes. Uh, well, I mean, we, he, we would go back and forth right. on, on different scenes or, or different, different moments. But, you know, I, 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 um, I, just wanted, I just wanted it to be something honest and not, you know, and, and not just be someone that is just uh, – just a swell old guy, and you know, look, look at him, look at him doing good by, you know, to him. It's, I, I feel like life in that, and it's more complicated in that way. And I think, uh, the, I tr we tried to make the part that way, that, that way too. Now, people have had a lot of different sort of thoughts about um, uh, the generation that you belong to, and 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 twenty year old people. Are you, were you and Josh at all sort of aware of any of that kind of talk about talk about uh, millennials or 20 something people these days? And, and was that something that that you're in any way conscious of or or is that in, in, in something that you ever think about? No, I mean, I don't we weren't that's not a we weren't really conscious of that making this movie. I mean, we, the, the main focus that we tried to 
um, get a handle on was the mother and son dynamic. Right. You know, and and that we just and then the movie takes place when it does. And then there are certain there are certain things that go along with that, like having a cell phone or, or you know, all, right. the, all those kinds of like millennial things. But um, no, I mean, I, I feel I at least I think that's not really what it's not. It's not about like a millennial slacker in, in, in that way. You know, it's, I think well, I'm it's, not sure that's necessarily what millennials are or, or, or what people. Well, I, I feel like I feel like that's the you mm -hmm. know. That's the first thing you think of, right? Just kind of low. well, people tend to think self inherent laziness is, is is what is what tends to be hung on them, whether yeah. it's unf whether it's fair or not. Yeah. Uh, and and I guess there's a, a certain way that you could say that about this guy, but it seems like it's in his unique way, not in any way that connects to anything. I, I agree. Larger than him. Mm -hmm. um, but what did your um what did what did your mom think of this movie? Uh, she hasn't seen it yet. Oh my gosh. Wow. There hasn't been a time for it. I mean, she'll she'll come to the New York, she'll come to the when we when it opens in New York. Well, that's going to be an interesting conversation. I think so. I mean, but I think she's pretty good at separating it. I mean, you know, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, it, I, I guess I guess what I'm trying. It's like I wanted to show my mom this movie. You know, I mean, it's it's sort of like it's a powerful mom son movie, and I feel like a lot of times you see a, you know dad daughter movies, and you know I, I feel like you don't see a mom uh, son kind of portrayed. Dynamic. quite in this way, this dynamic. So yeah. I was just think it's kind of be moving to see with, you know, whoever your mom is, even if you're not the star of the movie and it happens well, to be Well, you want to call him after. Yeah, this, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to call my mom. When, when was the last time you called your mom? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> I am way overdue. <laughs> um, well, uh, thanks uh, so much. Uh, it was Thank such you. a pleasure uh, seeing this movie. It was really a remarkable performance, and I feel like we're very fortunate for catching you with this time in your career. So. Oh, it's my pleasure to be Thank here. You Thanks so for coming.